tune again. Thanks for being part of our program. We appreciate it. Here we are together again on the radio. And uh, my voice doing funny things every once in a while. Crack it a little bit. I don't know. I'm uh, screaming a little too much when I'm not here. I think that's what it is. I used to do all my screaming on the air. Now I think I'm doing it outside of the studio. Is it puberty? Maybe uh, maybe I finally reached puberty, Brett. You might be right. Mm. Anyway. Thanks for being here. Thanks for being part of the program. We appreciate it. Did you see this story? <laughs> Meow is all I have to say to David Arquette. Meow. Says here, this from uh, MSN.com, Courtney Cox reportedly made her husband, actor David Arquette, throw away his entire lot of Playboy magazine which he had been collecting for more than 16 years after their child was born. 16 years of Playboys out. Pussy! Mm -hmm. According to the British tabloid The Sun, Courtney thought Playboy was too immature a thing for a father to read. He wasn't reading it, Courtney. The report quoted David as saying, quote, Courtney made me throw them away because I have to be a grown-up now. Oh, my God. Cox, who made a small fortune starring in the hit sitcom Friends, gave birth to the couple's daughter Coco earlier this year. And when the child was born, Arquette was quoted as saying, and I'm just cuckoo for Coco Cox. Is that the kid's last name, Cox? Is that true? Uh, isn't the uh, father's name Arquette? Meow is all I can say to all of that. Are you kidding me? Meow. Pussy. Now, um, look. Uh, anyone who's a regular listener to this, to this program knows... That uh, porn just doesn't do it for me. And uh, it's not because I'm a prude. It's not because I'm religious. I'm not. I'm an atheist. It's not because um, it, 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 it grosses me out or any of the things people say about pornography. And uh, Believe me, I see pornography every day, every day. And for me, I can't get hot unless I'm looking at naked pictures of people I know. That's the only pornography that works. So if I know you, or if I think I might be getting to know you really soon, and you sent me a naked picture, oh, that would get me hot, no doubt about it. But looking at photographs of women I'll never meet, women I'll never have, women I'll never talk to, it just does not do anything for me, and that includes Playboy, and uh, its lesser relatives like Penthouse. Uh, it includes uh, pictures on the Internet, videos, porn videos. Uh, it includes um, strip clubs. I mean, I've been to strip clubs, and I don't object to strip clubs. And uh, for those of you who love strip clubs, I think there should be a strip club on every street corner if that's what people want. But... You know, I, but first of all, I, I don't pay for sex or lap dances. I just don't do it. And so if, I, uh, if I'm if i at a strip club, I don't get hot. I see these women as human ATM machines. You're just making deposits. And not the kind of deposits I'd like to be making. So I do not get hot looking at these gold diggers coming at me, uh, you know, uh, coming up my wallet. Doesn't do it for me. What gets me hot is seeing people I know naked. Somebody I might actually get my hands on or have had my hands on. Uh, seeing them naked in photographs or videos, hot. 
All right. So understand where I'm coming from on the porn front. I do not object to porn. But um, I'd much rather have pictures of you, if I know you, than to have pictures of some stranger. That's just the way I feel about it. No doubt about it. But may I say... Um, most men don't agree with me. Most men love strip clubs. Most men love porn on the internet, porn videos. And uh, many, 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 many men, especially like looking at pictures in magazines like Playboy. And um, that's just the way it is. And frankly, I think um, if you like doing that, uh, you would be a fool to agree to throw all of that stuff out if you enjoy having it. Because while you may be in love now, and while your sex life may be good now, um, after a while, it starts to subside, boys. Trust me when I tell you. And not only that, but if she has children, I'm telling you, it's done. And your two best friends are Playboy and ESPN. Because she won't touch you with a ten-foot pole. Are there exceptions to that? Sure there are. So don't bother calling in. But I'm telling you right now, you know, most of the guys that I know who watch ESPN regularly or ESPN Classic, they are hearkening back to the days when they were getting sex regularly. They have been rejected at home to some extent. They're not getting what they used to get. They have to look at a 200-pounder now at home or whatever. And it's the same thing about their old playboys. It's like going back to your old girlfriends. These guys save their playboys and every once in a while harken back to a chick from a couple of years ago. I know how the game works. I understand. In no way I would let a woman make me throw my porn out. There's just no way. If I'm into porn, that's what I'm into. You know, I see this as a problem with a lot of people. I mean, it's not just playboy. There's a lot of guys, and boys, I, I, this is important, so please gather around the radio while I tell you this. There's a lot of boys who are so anxious to get into a woman's pants that they give up things that are their very essence. And, it, you know, it, it's different things for different gods. Uh, for me, I have had to have the fight more than once about my love for jazz, hockey, baseball, and... Um, there were relationships going way back 10 years and more ago uh, when I actually um, gave up some of the things I loved in order to keep peace in my household. Um, I, I've told the story on the air before uh, specifically about a woman I was with who absolutely hated the sound of baseball. Hated the sound of it in the background. I mean, it isn't just that she hated seeing me looking at it. She hated the ESPN music. You know that generic ESPN music that they play when sports are on? She hated that. I'm sure if I was with her today, she'd hate that Fox Sportsnet music. You know, that kind of cheap cable music that all the cable channels have. It's probably one guy with a synthesizer playing every instrument. Yeah, like that. And, um... Uh, she would, I mean, you could see the hair on the back of her neck stand up. And I think she had a lot more than I would have liked her to have, but the hair on the back of her neck would stand up the minute that music would come on. The minute she would hear sports music coming on, it, you could see her heading for the closet to get the vacuum cleaner. I swear, it was, it was the, the greatest example of passive-aggressive behavior I've ever seen in my entire life. You know, right about kickoff talk, which on the West Coast is 10 a.m., as we all know. You know, amazing how a woman can be home at all hours of the day and night, but she has to vacuum at 10 a.m. on Sunday. And uh, that's what was going on. I would turn on the game. She would turn on the vacuum cleaner. I would turn on ESPN, like Sports Center or something. She would complain. What are you doing in there? What are you? And I remember at one point, and I've told this story on the air before, but in case you don't know about this, I knew I had to change and I don't mean for her, I mean for me. One time I was sitting in a back bedroom in the back of the house with the sound turned down so she wouldn't hear it. Suddenly there's a knock at the door. What are you doing in there? What are you doing? Are you 
I'm coming in. What are you doing? I think she thought I was, like, pleasuring myself in there. <laughs> well, I was. I was watching ESPN. And for guys, that's frequently just as good. Came in and, like, caught me watching the game. I know another person who one time told me, and uh, this blew me away, okay, he was giving me a tour of his, his house. And I remember he finally took me to what looked like a guest room or a spare bedroom. And there was a TV in there. And he said, quote, I'm quoting him now, this is where she lets me watch hockey. This is where she lets me watch hockey. Like, you work, you earn most of the money, you pay the goddamn cable bill, and then she lets you watch hockey. Something's wrong there. Okay? I see many men giving up their passions. It can be going out drinking with the boys. It can be fishing or hunting on the weekend. It could be playing touch football. Or it could be uh, playing golf. Being down at the club. It could be going to sporting events. And pornography is only one passion that many men have. And uh, I have a general rule in life now, I must tell you, and uh, I'm, I, I, I want to share this with you, and I really mean this in all sincerity. Whatever you are passionate about, never, ever give in to some bitch and give it up. Never. Don't give up your friends. In my case, I didn't give up my jazz. I don't give up my hockey or baseball. I've got every sports package you can name on my satellite dish I'm not giving it up I was on vacation recently I had games on from 10 in the morning until 10 at night there was baseball on all day loved it loved it never ever give up your passions if she doesn't like it, she's the wrong person for you. And by the way, when you do what David Arquette has apparently done, you have just set a precedent. First you give up the pornography, and then she starts telling you the other things you're not allowed to do. I wish he had consulted with me first, because I would have told him, you keep every copy of that Playboy. You keep that. That's yours. And if she doesn't like it, guess what? She tosses you out. It's a community property state, baby. <laughs> Turn about being fair play. You know how much money she made on friends? Go, 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 go. That's my attitude. That, that would be my attitude if I were David Arquette. No doubt about it. You're not throw out your playboys. You're not throw out your pornography. You're not stop watching your sports or hanging out with your friends. Ever have a chick who wants, wants to tell you, oh, yeah, I don't like this friend you have and I don't like that friend you have. Guess what? They were here before you, sweetheart. Don't like it? Get out. Out. Most of you boys don't have the balls to do that. But believe you me, you get a lot more respect around the house. When you say, look, this is who I am. Look at it, playboy, and spend a little time, uh, uh, time in the bathroom with my boxer shorts around my ankles. That is who I am. Part of who I am. It's part of the package you got. With me uh, hanging out, uh, you know, around hockey players or uh, uh, hanging around the TV watching the Lakers, that, that's part of who I am. I'm not giving that up for anybody. Ever. This is one way you can weed out the people who are not appropriate for you. People who don't share your values. And any time that I hear of a guy doing something as, as was uh, alleged in this case, and again, it came from the Sun tabloid, uh, you know what their record for accuracy is, that's Rupert Murdoch. Who knows how accurate it is, I don't know. I only know the accuracy record of the New York Post, also owned by Rupert Murdoch. So, who knows? Maybe David Arquette did not throw out his Playboys. Maybe he didn't have Playboys. Maybe it's all made up. I don't know. But if this did happen, I, I think it's a very bad precedent to set in a relationship. Would you give up your pornography collection? Has she ever tried to do that to you? Have you pushed out? Have you knuckled under? Maybe it's too late to do anything about it. Maybe you're one of these people who's, uh, you know, 
who started with the porn, and then it went on to the football, then it went on to your hunting with your buddies, then it went on to your skeet shooting on the weekends, then it went on to your fishing, then it went on to you know all the other things you love that she's going to stop you from doing. She's going to take away your very essence. Does this sound familiar to you? Tom like it. 1-800-5800-TOM. 1-800-5800-866. Tom, you're amazing. I love you. Do you know that? Uh, 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 I still love you. You are just, you are my strength. You are my everything. It's the Tom Like It Show. Uh, the Tom Like It Show on 1-800-5800-TOM. That's our telephone number. It's John on the Tom Like It Show. Hello. Dad. Son, how are you? I should have listened to you. Oh, boy. I've been married for three and a half years, three kids, and no sex. Three kids in three and a half years? Yep. Let me guess, it's Seattle. You had two of them before That's you got married. It. Uh-huh. That's it. Uh-huh. She wrote me in. Uh-huh. At first, the sex was abundant. Mm-hmm. Uh-huh. And then after the kids came along, each kid, less and less. Uh-huh. Jeez. And uh, when you tell her this is unacceptable, what does she tell you? Oh, she lets me watch the porn. She lets you watch. See, listen to that language you use. She lets me watch. Mm-hmm. Let's me. Mm-hmm. Mommy lets you watch porno. Mm-hmm. Isn't that nice? Yep. But I got to say that, that David Arquette, he's a pussy. God, oh. If his wife is telling him that he can't watch porn and, and do this and that. My yeah. God. You know what? If I had to look at that turkey neck naked, I'd be looking at Playboy, too. <laughs> I'll tell you right now. All right, thanks, Tom. John, thank you. And I had to say, sorry. 1-800-5800-TOM is our telephone number. Millie on the Tom Likas Show. Hello. Hello. Yes. Hey, I just wanted to say that I think you're totally right when you're t- talking to guys, telling them to be up front with the women and, mm-hmm. and tell them how to set it straight. Because I've been married almost six years now, and my husband was full of campaign promises of when we were dating, and now I'm stuck with his ass. He's the true person, not the person I thought he was. Why did you stay? He needed to make both of us happy by telling the truth. Why do you stay? Huh? Why do you stay? Because he's a loser, and he's a stay-at-home dad, and I need daycare. You stay with him because he's a loser. That's wonderful. The Tom Likas Show. This is the Tom Likas Show. From Los Angeles at 1 800 5 800 Tom. It's Lorenzo on the Tom Likas Show. Hello. How you doing, Tom? Doing okay, Lorenzo. Okay, I got a good story. Dean loved this. Going out for this girl was three years. She always complained, always bitching, but, you know, hanging out with me and my boys. She hated the Xbox. She said, Lorenzo, it's me or the Xbox. I said, baby, I'm sorry. I love you, but you have to go. <laughs> no box is better than my Xbox. That's it. Exactly. <laughs> <laughs> I said, bitch, who do you think you are? I said, I'm not going to choose my games and my friends above you. I said, you're a dime a dozen. <laughs> Absolutely. And, <laughs> vaginas are like buses. You wait ten minutes, another one's going to come along. Uh, yes. <laughs> right, Tom, I know you, are you in the sport, too? Are you in the video game? Uh, somewhat, yes, I am, as a matter of fact. <laughs> yes, I am. What do you think is better right now, ESPN or Madden? Well, Madden certainly is the more violent of the two, and I'm a big fan of violence. Yeah. Unless it's happening in my head, then I don't like it so much, but uh, I certainly like watching it. <laughs> Isn't there football tonight? Uh, yes, as a matter of fact, I believe there is. Do you know who's playing? Is it tomorrow? Oh, it's tomorrow, Brett says. I thought it was tonight. Yeah, and they got the big... Uh, uh, wow, we'll get Elton John, that big football fan, is going to be playing uh, before the game. That's going to be very exciting. <laughs> yeah, it should be pretty interesting. <laughs> <laughs> Tom, can you take me out Tyrone Washington style? Tyrone Washington style? Uh, yeah. I don't think we have that. Oh, you don't? No, we would love to, but... <laughs> We were not ready for that one. One eight hundred five eight hundred Tom is our telephone number. Uh, this is Brian on the Tom Likas show. Hello. Hello, Tom. Hello, Brian. Long time listener. Hey, I was just going to say. First off, the only women that have problems with having magazines and porn around are the insecure women who know that they can't even match the women in the magazine. Well, that's the whole that's thing. If you have chicks who are having a hard time with the porn being around, it's because they're hideous or or aging. 
Exactly. You know, I just got married myself. Courtney Cox isn't hideous, but she's, you know, getting in the the, the range of 40, isn't she? Yeah, exactly. You know, I, yeah. I just got married myself, and you know what? I can't I, believe you want to look at these 18-year-old girls with large breasts. What is that? If, Grow up! If they're, if they're secure with you, you know, that's cool. But you know what? I always used to do as a, as a date when I was single. I would keep the magazines out on the bathroom when I was having that. You know what? And I would know right then if they ever had a problem with it. Right. That's the way to do it. And you know what? Any one of these guys is going to give it up for that. They need to have the mail mix song they're playing when they come home every night. No doubt about it. Thank you. 1-800-5800-TOM is our telephone number. It's Derek on the Tom Like Your Show. Hello. Hey, brother. How you doing? Man? All right, Derek. I just wanted to touch on something you spoke about earlier first. Uh -huh. uh, strip bars. I yes. can't understand how any man can lower himself to the point where he would pay a woman to act like she's interested in him, man. <laughs> uh, you ever worked at a restaurant? Uh, well, you know, probably not. And and kudos to you because you are the man. But I'm not going to waste things, waste time telling you things you already know. Um, but you know, anybody who's ever worked in a restaurant develops a certain feeling towards the customers. And I think that a lot of men would probably view strip bars differently if they thought about what these women are actually thinking about them at the time. Oh, no doubt. I mean, I mean, what a way to lower yourself. Absolutely. Self-respect. Um, another thing, and I know you've got a lot of people that want to talk to you. I just wanted to touch on, man, I have heard you so many times and had so many things to say, but this is probably the most important, and this illustrates the fact that you know what you're talking about. I'm 29 years old. I was married within the last year, and let me tell you, brother, things do change. Um, now, my wife doesn't have a problem with the porn. Sometimes I leave it on the Internet for her, and she appreciates that, but that's not my point. My point is, after you say those vows, it becomes a control issue. And I've been around long enough to know that it's not just one woman or a few of them, but it's all of them. They want to control us. They want to tell us what we can and can't do. And you give up one little thing, and you're going to lose no doubt. information. And no I want to thank doubt. you for, for spreading it. Well, uh, Derek, thank you. And there's no doubt about that. Once you uh, give it, it yeah, they love to tell you, by the way, and don't listen to this propaganda they give you, that marriage is all about compromise. If you have to compromise too much, you are with the wrong person. If you have to give up your basic essence, you are with the wrong person. If you're always being told what's wrong with you and that you have to change and you find yourself trying to change, you're with the wrong person. Do not believe people when they tell you that marriage is all about compromise. It's all about give and take. No, no. 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 You need to be with somebody with whom you don't have to compromise. You don't have to give up your essence, whatever that is. And this works both ways, by the way. This is why I tell you not to have a relationship with a bisexual if you want to have a monogamous relationship. Because that person's essence is not going to change. They'll tell you they'll change. They'll tell you they'll suppress that part of their personality. But they won't, ultimately. At some point, they're going to find a way to express that part of themselves. And you will be hurt. Uh, ever uh, dated a chick who's like a real party girl? She just likes going out to clubs. She's not happy unless she's out at clubs. Several nights a week. Ever been with a chick like that? She has to go out to clubs. I'm telling you, a woman may tell you that, well, she just wants to settle down and stay home with you. But women who are like that, who are constantly bored, constantly needing to go out, constantly needing the stimulation of men gawking at them and being out at clubs until they close every night, she's not going to change for you at all. Why knock yourself over the head trying to change somebody? You can't do it. And uh, I don't think men or women should give up their essence. You know what? If you have to give up too much of who you really are, you're with the wrong person. That's the time you have to sit down and say to yourself, you know what? I'm with someone who doesn't share my values. I'm with somebody who doesn't like the same things I like. I'm with somebody who doesn't like me as I am. I come as a package. I come with all of my baggage. I come with the things I like. I come with the things I don't like. I come with my prejudices. I come with my history. I come with my life story. I come with the whole package. Anybody who tries to get you to change any element of that is the wrong person for you. If your wife comes home and says, you get rid of your 16 years of Playboy magazines, you're with 
the wrong person. If you're the woman who says, I don't like half of your friends or all of your friends or select friends, I want you to stop talking to them or I don't want them around my house, my house, they love saying that, my house, that is part of the mental preparation for taking that house away from you once you get divorced. When a woman calls it my house, not our house, not the house, not your house, which it was before you got married. You may have owned that house first. She'll start saying, my house. I don't want that in my house. It, 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 language is very important. The things people say, every pronoun, every preposition, the way they use it, tells you something about the way they think. When a woman says, I don't want your friends in my house, she's doing two things. One is, she's trying to control you and take away your friends. Two, she's preparing you for the day she's going to steal your house out from under you, which one day she will do if the two of you don't stay together. If you find yourself with a person who says things like that to you, you're with the wrong person. And all too often, we don't have the balls to man up and say, I'm not going to take this anymore. You're going to tolerate what I like, or you're going to get out, you bitch. We just don't have the guts to do it. And more of us need to have the guts to do it. If you come into my room and you tell me to get rid of my Playboys, and I've been collecting Playboys for 16 years, here's your choice. Get out or learn to live with it. That's your choice. Anybody think that's unreasonable? Tom Like His Show, 1-800-5800-TOM. It's Pete on the Tom Like His Show. Hello. Hey, Tom. How are you? I'm okay. You know, I've been listening to you for a couple of years now, you know, and I just uh, had a little experience happen to me here. I ended up getting married on uh, May 19th of this year, you know, and I, I got me this dog. I've had this dog for quite a while now. And uh, she uh, she's always, like, didn't like the dog, didn't want the dog to go. Well, now we're getting a divorce and the dog is staying. You know what I'm saying, Tom? Mm-hmm. I mean, I'm not going to give up something like a dog for any woman, you know, especially a dog that I've had around for that long. I'm kind of partial to the dog. The woman can go. And I, I'm, I got this too, Tom. Is it like, uh, you know, I, I used to go out and, and uh, like us 101, everything, you know, and I thought it was time to settle down. I was 20, uh, 37, she's uh, 23. Uh -huh. And uh, the fact of the matter is, Tom, is that marriage is for the birds, dude. I just go out with them, do what you're supposed to do, you know, with the dating, what dating's supposed to lead to. I agree with you 110%. Mm -hmm. And that's what women are good for, in my book. <laughs> I, uh, I'm not looking for the relationship no more. You know what I mean? I'll keep the dog, and I'll take him out on a date. They can pay half, and we can go do what we got to do afterwards. No doubt about it. Thank you. Tomas on the Tom Likas Show. Hello. Hey, what's going on, Tom? How's it going? I'm uh, pretty good. Hey, man. My old lady, she she located my porno sesh, and I, all I did was make things better in the marriage, man. I kid you not. She um went through there, and I didn't even know. I got home from work. And before you know it, she had some hustlers and other magazines. And I was like, oh, man, this is cool. I mean, like, where did you get these from? And she's like, well, you know, I found your stash, and don't worry about it. I think it's cool. And, and like every other payday, she actually comes home and brings back a DVD or something, too. And um, There you go. It's like it's a trip, and it's actually made us really closer together. And I was like, "You're cool about this?" She's like, "Yeah, you know, I know you ain't gonna do anything. It's just me, you know." And I'm like, "Yeah, you know, my heart's for you, but I like to look at women." And she's like, "Yeah, it's cool, you know. Don't worry about it." And like I said, since she's found the stash, I hit it at least maybe two, three times more a week, and everything's going real good for us, man. And it's going great. I'm good glad for you. Found it. Good for and, you. Um, she's a good Mexican woman. She cooks me my um, beans and my enchiladas every day like they should. Perfect. And um, I can't complain. So, uh, Tom, can you take me out Latina style? Of course I can. Here oh, you man. go. <laughs> Latinos, you shut up! 1-800-5800-TOM is our telephone number. Regina, um, by the way, uh, that voice, she is now in a TV commercial. Can you believe that? I'm not going to tell you which one. Maybe one of you will guess. But she's in a TV commercial. Shut up! <laughs> um, I'll give you a hit. It's not in English. Shut up! Regina on the Tom Likas show. Hello. Yes. Yes. This is Regina. Is I know. Tom? I just said that. Okay. I'm sorry. I couldn't hear you very well. Anyway, the reason... How about now? Can you hear me now? Shut up! I 
disagree that all we, that most women uh, control men because there's many men out there that control women. So so what? I decided I'm going to come up with my own show. Well, so good, you do that. Win. All right, you go ahead and do that. Where are you going? Where are you going to start? Where are you going to start? And it's going to be against Tom Likas. All right, where? What station? I'll be listening. My boyfriend is a dedicated listener to you. I've been listening to your show for like three months now. Yeah. And and he's a dedicated listener. And I think that you affect you're affecting all these men and corrupting these men. You know. Yes. Women. Yeah, well, I think these guys need to be corrected. They need help. They don't have a lot of them. Don't have their dad around to kick their ass. They're happy the way that they are. No, they're not happy being pussy whipped by women like you, and that's why I'm here. Pussy whipped. Yeah. Well, I. You know what? I think uh, many men are, and uh, that's why they need me. No, I. They really need their. They really need their dad, but dad uh, has absconded, and so. uh, No, we don't need you telling us what to do, dear. Well, I don't tell everybody what to do, first of all, because, I mean, I have my own life. But you are the one, you're telling these men what to do with their life. I guess I am. I'm telling them. I'm a woman telling them. I'm giving them advice. Look, they don't have to do what I say. And I won't uh, withhold sex or uh, make their lives difficult. I mean, I don't know what they're doing. I just give them advice and they can listen or not. You know what? Your husband is stuck with you like a hostage. He's stuck there. He has to listen to your voice every day, every night. Uh, the guys only listen uh, to me if they want to. They don't have to listen to me. That's the difference, darling. Can you and tell the difference? Makes you, and what makes you think that, that you're the person that should be telling them... Uh, the that? ratings, dear. Uh, you look at the ratings, you see we're number that one in men, and then you know, huh? That doesn't mean anything. Well, sure it does. If, if my advice uh, was not uh, being heeded, if it was not needed by the men who listen, uh, it would not have the ratings it has. I disagree. I, I just think that... Uh, well, then tell me why we have so many listeners. Why are we so popular? That I don't know, unfortunately. Ah, you don't know why. But, uh, but, but you think it's impossible. Uh, I mean, there are some topics that you have that, that I would agree on, but most of them I don't... I don't well, you're not, you're not supposed to agree, dear. This is a show about men. It is a show by men, about men, and for men. You are welcome to listen. But, but it is not for you. You are not in the target demographic. If you want to listen to a station for women, there's some station in town playing Celine Dion or Tony Braxton. That's where you ought to be. We we don't do the show for you. But 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 most we don't really care if you agree or not. This show is not for you. Really. Really. In fact, if you stop listening today, it will not affect me one iota. She hung up. Bitch. One hundred. Five hundred. You're such an OG pimp. I love your style, you know. What you teach is like how I live, you know. That's my life now. Thank God. The Tom Likas Show. The Tom Likas Show. 1-800-5800-TOM. That's our telephone number. It's Diana on the Tom Likas Show. Hello. Hi, how are you? Do you care, Diana? <laughs> I actually do, actually. I'm doing great. Well, good. Um, well, I was calling because um, I went to... I, I'm perfectly okay with porn. I actually really like it. Um, but I went to Las Vegas with my boyfriend um, this last weekend, and we went to a strip club. And I was just wondering if lap dances... Is that really supposed to be okay? I mean, um, are we are we women really supposed to be just sit there and watch... Like, these naked women grind on your boyfriends and be okay with that? Well, that's uh, an individual issue that couples have to deal with. You have to decide what you can handle or not handle. Uh, yeah, well, I, uh, yeah, well, I told him that I wasn't comfortable with it, so he didn't get one. But it's just amazing how... But if he wants that and he's going to feel, but uh, you know, deprived, uh, you're probably with the wrong guy. Yeah, well, I, I don't think that he feels... Well, see, here's the thing. He's um, been with a, quite a few, quite a few of women, and um, I have not. So yeah, but you're you're a lot older. Uh, he's a lot older than you are, right? He is. Yeah, well, that's what you have to expect. He couldn't wait around for you to come along. The Dom Likes Show.